Hello friends. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, this procedure series where I will take you through bronchoscopic percutaneous tracheostomy. So I wish to acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Raghavendra Kotal, who has uh, recorded this video and has edited the video. Uh, so my gratitude for him. Uh, so, so we'll just take into the brief background of tracheostomy and then I'll take you through the video. Uh, so the question that comes to everyone's mind is whether early is better or late is better. So there are multiple studies that have been done to ascertain whether early tracheostomy is beneficial as compared to late. When we say early, it is less than 10 days and late is more than 10 days. So multiple studies have been done and none of the studies have been conclusive enough to say early is better over the late. And uh, this could not be a part of the guidelines. So none of the guidelines could pinpoint and say whether early is better or late is better. So there has been no benefit with regards to ICU length of stay. There's no benefit with regards to mortality or ventilator associated pneumonia. And there's no benefit with regards to any tracheal complications. But the common sense prevails that in situations where one would expect that there is going to be a prolonged need for airway protection, typically that would happen in a traumatic brain injury or a massive stroke. One would imagine doing an early tracheostomy would help you to bring him out of the ventilator and send him to a rehabilitation process, which appears a lot more prudent and pragmatic. So, so one should possibly apply those thought processes to look into the trajectory of the clinical progress and then decide uh, whether one would contemplate on doing early. But when you look at the evidence, there's no conclusive evidence. Then the second question that should come in one's mind is whether percutaneous is any superior to surgical. So studies have shown that uh, doing surgical tracheostomy in the theater is almost become obsolete from ICU point of view because moving a sick ICU patient on a ventilator to the OT setting and incurring a lot of OT costs and taking him to theater for a tracheostomy is almost uh, not being done in most of the units, uh, most of the good units. So if at all one could argue whether surgical tracheostomy at the bedside versus percutaneous tracheostomy because the studies have shown moving the patient to the theater for the procedure, he carries along with it the morbidity and the morbidity is put at 13 to 33% moving the ICU sick patients to OT for undergoing tracheostomy. And if you look into the studies, there are multiple studies. This was an earlier meta-analysis of 17 randomized controlled trials of 1,212 patients, which looked at the risk of wound infection. And they found that the wound infection was significantly less in patients who underwent percutaneous as opposed to surgical. And some of the reasons cited is there is minimal invasive sort of a dissection that happens with percutaneous because it is more of a dilation technique, which you will see it in the video. And so the wound infection was found to be less. And this was the recent uh, meta-analysis in 2014 which came uh, with the combined authors from Germany and Italy, 14 RCTs, uh, 973 patients, where they showed the risk of inflammation and infection was significantly less in percutaneous tracheostomy. Although this study uh, sort of suggested that the technical difficulty appeared to be a little higher in percutaneous tracheostomy too. So now we'll jump with this in the background, we'll jump into the procedural aspect. So the first step whilst doing tracheostomy is to obviously identify the tracheal ring. So it is desirable that second or third tracheal ring is uh, recognized and the tracheostomy tube is uh, inserted into the second or third tracheal ring. And after the skin incision is made, the dilatation is made with using uh, dilators uh, to create a portal of entry for the dilators and the tracheostomy. So the bronchoscopy tube is put in and it is left at the end of the ET tube to visualize uh, the introducer needle and the guide wire that uh, one would put in for the tracheostomy. And you will see it in the video, all these steps. So once the bronchoscope is put in, once the skin dissection is done to create a portal, then a needle with cannula is inserted into the second or third tracheal ring. So this is the beauty of bronchoscopy. So when you have a bronchoscopic visualization, see, as you see here, you see the entry port of the needle. So the needle gets into the trachea. So I th the beauty of having to do it with bronchoscopy is you will prevent the needle uh, puncturing the posterior wall, which can be quite risky and it can cause uh, emphysema. So care has to be taken so that there is no perforation or puncture of the posterior tracheal wall. And with bronchoscopy, you would, since you are doing it under visualization, you would avoid that happening. And once the needle is put in, the cannula above that needle is passed into the 
ट्रिक किया एंड यू लुक फॉर द एयर कमिंग आउट from the cannula ensuring that it is in place and that you would see it even with bronchoscopy so in bronchoscopy as you see here this cannula is in place and uh, it is sitting nicely in the lumen so once you confirm this then you would pass the guide wire so the guide wire is passed into the cannula and as you see bronchoscopically you will see there is a cannula and you will see this nice dark guide wire passing through the cannula into the lumen of the tracheostomy tube and once the guide wire is passed over the guide wire there is a mini dilator small dilator which you will see in the video is passed and this mini dilator is meant to be lubricated with the uh, xylocaine and then or a jelly and then it is introduced into this ring uh, over the guide wire and once the mini dilator is passed there is a progressive dilator of this uh, i'm sure most of the listeners would have seen percutaneous so there is a progressive dilator which sort of uh, tapers down at the edge and then it broadens up so with this you open up the uh, sort uh, you open up the pathway for the tracheostomy to be inserted under bronchoscopic visualization so as you see in bronchoscope you would be really seeing this uh, progressive dilator sitting nicely in the lumen and you would pass this progressive dilator until this black line Uh, which ensures there is adequate dilatation and the pathway created for the tracheostomy tube to be put in and then you would pass the tracheostomy tube which is uh, loaded over a loader and then you would pass the whole tube through the guide wire and the dilating catheter that is there on the guide wire so these are the steps that i have taken you through so now i'll play the video so you can go through how we have done this uh, bronchoscopic percutaneous tracheostomy in our unit and this has been uh, recorded so then quickly we'll talk about complications of what are the complications of percutaneous uh, tracheostomy so there are immediate complications early and late complications so the immediate complications uh, can be pneumothorax when you puncture the uh, posterior uh, tracheal wall or the lung uh, or the pleura so or then there can be mediastinal emphysema also so there is a pneumomediastinum and pneumothorax can be the dreaded complication uh, then whilst you are doing the procedure you may lose the airway the et tube may come out and that can be disastrous especially when you have a patient with difficult airway because the neck would be extended when you are doing a tracheostomy uh, so loss of airway is another uh, complication and as i said posterior wall injury is a complication which should be kept in mind and bronchoscopic procedure of tracheostomy would uh, really prevent this posterior wall injury because you are really visualizing the passage of the dilator and the tracheostomy tube and injury to the esophagus also is a complication hemorrhage at the site of inserting the tracheostomy or inflammation at the site of stoma which is a little later complication and sometimes if you are uh, putting too much of pressure which is, which is very close to the tracheal obviously you'll be passing it between the tracheal rings so there is a potential risk of tracheal ring fracture also that can happen so these are some of the uh, immediate and uh, early complications of tracheostomy so i'll just take you through the procedure video procedure so this is the tracheostomy kit that you would have so as you see uh, you have a sca scapula uh so to make an incision then you have a needle with a cannula here with a syringe and then this is the white one is a mini dilator you have a guide wire and then you have this progressive dilator this is the loader over which the tracheostomy tube is loaded and then you have this inner tubes so i'll just play this video so go through it and these are the steps that uh, uh, one should undertake while doing so position of the patient is most important so obviously you need to Uh, put a pillow or a put a roll of towel to extend the neck so that the tracheal ring stand out and your dissection becomes easy and the passing the tracheostomy and the whole procedure becomes easier so i'll just play this video and just have a look <coughs> so there is this local infiltration that we are doing so as you see see this is the uh, you would see here local in so while doing local infiltration will pass it into the trachea will infiltrate a bit into the trachea and you could see it in the bronchoscopy so then we would make a skin incision all right so the ring has been identified and the skin incision is being done as you see
now you see the dilator uh, as i showed you in the steps so this is the uh, dilators that are used to dilate the skin to create a portal for entry of the uh, mini dilator the guide wire and the progressive dilator so once adequate dilatation is done so it is important to feel the tracheal ring and uh, make sure that uh, ring is nicely felt so that's what you would see is pass the little finger to see whether the tracheal ring is nicely felt so now you have taken a syringe with a saline along with a needle with a cannula so this is the needle with the cannula so there is a cannula above that needle so it is a 16 gauge one so you would feel the tracheal ring and then pass this needle with the cannula so you see this is a very very important step and this is done under visualization with bronchoscopy so that you don't puncture the posterior tracheal wall so this is very important see as you see there is a nice air being withdrawn and then you would confirm it on a bronchoscopy see you see a nice needle here sitting in the lumen and once you know the needle is sitting in the lumen then the cannula see you see the cannula being pushed into the lumen of the trachea and then see you see that tra transparent cannula sitting there and the needle is removed so in bronchoscope you are absolutely ensuring it is nicely sitting in the lumen and it is not touching the posterior tracheal wall so this is a very important step and bronchoscopy makes this very easy for you to determine that you are nicely sitting in the lumen and not creating the false track so you would see the air bubbling uh, so the video i'm not sure if you can make out so you see you see here there's a nice cannula sitting inside and in that cannula guide wire is being passed and even you would want to see that guide wire is not puncturing the posterior pharyngeal wall and it is nicely sitting in the lumen of the trachea okay so now you will see in the bronchoscope the guide wire nicely sitting and then the cannula is being removed so you can see so that's a nice guide wire which is sitting inside the lumen of the trachea and now you have this mini dilator so as you see the operator has put the mini dilator and passing over the guide wire and you can see that mini dilator going in the lumen so you see the mini dilator and it is you know it is in the lumen it is not punctured the posterior tracheal wall once the mini dilator is removed the big dilator is passed in this is a progressive dilator and you need to pass it until the black line and throughout the procedure it is important that the trachea is stabilized with the left hand see you see the progressive dilator nicely going inside the lumen there is a little obscuring here but i think the bronchoscope may have a little bit more but you can see that nicely see that progressive dilator going into the lumen of the trachea so once that is done you can see the loader and the tracheostomy tube so tracheostomy tube is put into the lo loader and the guide wire is pulled in until this white dilating catheter is come out and now see as you see the left hand is being uh, used to stabilize the trachea and the tracheostomy tube is passed inside the lumen of the trachea so he has removed the whole thing as you see the tracheostomy is successfully inserted and most importantly after doing percutaneous tracheostomy it is important that you put in the inner tube cannula because inner tube cannula would prevent the blockage of the tracheostomy tube so as you see after we put the tracheostomy it is important that we check the air entry equally because you know the risk one of the complication is pneumothorax or mediastinal emphysema or surgical emphysema or pneumomediastinum so you ensure with auscultation that there is a good air entry 
after that it is important see, as you see the inner tube is being put in so it's important we put the inner tube because even when there is any blood clot or something which blocks the trachea inner tube can be pulled out then the outer tube will be protecting the airway so that's the procedure and i'll just take you through quickly certain com uh, complications the long term complications that can happen through the video as you see the inflation of the cuff is very important because you should not over inflate because over inflation of the cuff would lead to obstruction or impinging on the esophagus and it can lead to necrosis of the tracheal wall so it is very important that the uh, tracheal pressure is monitored with the cuff inflation pressure has to be monitored and uh, another important uh, risk of uh, tracheostomy is the micro aspirations that can happen if the cuff is not fully inflated as you see uh, there can be because the cough reflex will be compromised and the swallowing is compromised and when patient is swallowing anything so there is a small risk of uh, of aspiration and if the cuff is not fully inflated and this can micro aspiration can happen inside the lungs so that is a bit about uh, long term complications so there can be tracheal stenosis and uh, necrosis of the wall so the cuff pressure is something that is important so the low pressure or uh, cuff not fully inflated also can lead to aspiration and over inflation can lead to uh, posterior uh, tracheal wall necrosis or it can lead to tracheoesophageal fistula and so on and so forth so thank you very much so i went with this uh, beautiful quote so gratitude makes uh, sense of our past brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow so thank you all so i'll be doing some more of these uh, procedural videos uh, which would be useful for a young trainee to go through the steps so thank you all so you can visit my website www.drpradeeprangappa.com to re hear this uh, or to relook into this uh, video thank you all